Hi, Carl here for Pro VTV. I'm at NAB 2018 at the Sony stand, once again talking to Tom about XDCam Air. Now this, this is your baby, right? This is my bread and butter and what <laughs> I do of a day. Um, XDCam Air is a really exciting concept. We've been talking about it at various little trade shows. It's really come of age now. We have customers in the world out trying it out and it's launching for everybody around July time. Amazing. So let, let's, for the people who haven't heard of it, take it right back and just very quickly explain the whole concept. What is XDCam Air? Okay, so for a while now we've been putting networking modules in our cameras. Yeah. And a lot of people have gone, oh great, I can, I can do a stream. And you can do a stream, that's great. But in a camera, you've got certainly streams, got a couple of different types of streams. You've got proxy files, you've got high res files, you've got settings, you've got metadata. There's a load of different things that are useful in a production to be able to modify or synchronize from wherever you are. So XDCam Air is basically something that turns a remote camera into a local resource. That's the simplest way to, to explain it. And the version that we're showing off here includes some really exciting functions. So, of course, we've got a streaming receiver and we can take a stream from a camera and then we can distribute that. So you can either go back out to SDI, we've got a server for connecting up to that, but you could have several of those anywhere you want on Earth and distribute to all of them at the same time. We can also take an RTMP stream and send that to for example, YouTube or Facebook, or to the ingest module of your favorite map. On the file side, we have a content management system that can receive a file, um, but that has an API attached to it, which we can do really cool things with. So one of the things we're showing off is a Premiere integration, where the editor gets the files turning up as the camera is spitting them out, wherever they are on Earth, which is very, very cool. We can now, for example, modify the settings of a camera. So we can take an all file from one, say you've got 10 PMW 400s or something like that. You can pull a settings file out of one of them and publish it to all of the others so that you know that everything's synchronized across, the, across your camera park, which is a really useful feature. Um, we have a metadata module. So here we're showing it com connected to an ENPS um, news system. So when someone generates a story, that story then gets mirrored onto the XDCAM Air platform and we're able to publish that out to cameras too. So that means that a journalist can be on the way out, S someone is typing up the story in the system, creating the placeholder, creating the rundown, all that kind of stuff. When they get there and turn the camera on, the camera will handshake with the platform and will receive the story. So the clips that it then automatically sends back are already labeled with all the appropriate metadata on them which means that then coming into a larger MAM system or even a smaller one, we can then make sure stuff ends up in the right folder in front of the right people. It, it can really change how we work with stuff. So it's been very, very exciting showing this off to people because everyone sees different possibilities in it. Um, yeah, it's a really exciting platform. Absolutely. I mean, I think people seeing different possibilities in it is, is key, isn't it? This, this is just a, simply a platform that can be used for so many so Absolutely. different use cases. Should we talk through some of those use cases? I mean, where, uh, maybe uh, is there something on the, on the very small end of what this could be used for that's quite interesting? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Simply, if you've got an editor somewhere or you've got a producer somewhere, you're going out and shooting a documentary on your own. Being able to make sure that those clips, even light proxy clips, one megabit per second, but enough to see what's going on, get in front of a, um, a producer to make sure that they're getting the shots that they need so that they don't have to be there. That's a really simple use case, uh, but a really powerful one. Um, simply being able to automatically name the clips for a few different cameras at a time. Really simple, but really, really powerful and can save a lot of time in the logging and editing process. Every time we show this to someone, they have different ideas about it. I've been showing universities and broadcasters and production companies, rental houses. Rental houses love the feature of the, um, the settings because when the cameras come back to their park, they don't have to go through and manually change everything. It's just flash them back out. So they're, so they're sort of not using it remotely out in the location at all. They're just using it in their building to exactly. stop having to wire cameras up and go through each one. Exactly, and the scope for for example, problem solving remotely. It's like, oh, the colors are funny. Wait, well, let me resend you the settings file, restart it, it will be okay. There's a lot of exciting possibilities here. I mean, its main sort of target audience, do you reckon that's news, that's sort of journalism? In the first instance, absolutely. Um, this type of platform will be getting incremental features for years to come. 
the first target for it is absolutely broadcast news because they've got the most immediate requirement for it. Um, but as we go on, we'll see more and more and more different people using it. Okay, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you.